To all of you who bought the Sony WF-1000XM5, congratulations, you're now a proud owner of one of the most full-featured noise-canceling earbuds in the market. And it's good that you're watching this video because it's so full-featured that at first, if you look at the Sony Headphones Connect app, you'll be quite overwhelmed. And the worst thing that anyone can do after spending all of that money on a pair of earbuds is to not know how to work the app and maximize its potential. Now, I admit that not every setting is important, but some settings are gonna make a big difference to your experience with the XM5. So strap in, buckle up, Here's how to customize the XM5s to fit you, the owner, through the Sony Headphones Connect app, which I'm going to call up right now. Okay, so this is the Sony Headphones Connect app. Now, I admit that for somebody who hasn't had any experience with Sony earbuds or headphones before, this could look a little intimidating, but trust me, it's actually a lot simpler than it looks let me explain. At the top, we've got the name of the product, which is obviously the WF-1000XM5. And below that, we can see what codec we're using. In this case, this is the LDAC audio codec, which is a high resolution audio codec only available on Android devices. On iOS, you're more likely to see either AAC or SBC. And below that, we've got the main body of settings. We've got the status page, the sound page, the system page, and services page. Now, for your convenience, I've also organized this video into chapters, which reflects these different pages, so it's easier for you to jump around the video if you want. On the status page, we see some playback controls as well as volume controls and a sound pressure level to give you some information about how loud you are playing your music. And above the playback controls, we see something called adaptive sound control. Now, what is that? Adaptive sound control basically allows you to set your preferred ambient sound level to different actions or places. And depending on what you're doing, you could be running, staying one spot, uh, on public transport, or maybe even just walking on the street, it will switch automatically between these different presets that you set for these actions. Now, there are two levels of adaptive sound control, and they both complement each other. Let me explain. When you tap into adaptive sound control, you see that by default it's switched off. Let's turn it on. Now, tap on the cogwheel at the bottom. And here you can see that you can set presets for four different types of actions. This is action-based adaptive sound control. And you can set individual ambient sound level presets for actions like walking, staying, when running, or when riding a vehicle. Very straightforward. Just tap on the cogwheel at the top right hand corner and you'll see this tab based menu that allows you to set ambient sound levels for different kinds of actions. And it's pretty handy because say when you're running, right? From a safety standpoint, you'll want to be able to hear everything around you, including vehicles, people walking, bicycles, coming at you from behind, you know. So these are things that you want to keep a lookout for. And it's always best to have like ambient sound level maxed out. Or maybe when you're walking also, or when you're traveling in a vehicle, you may want different levels of ambient sound. This is completely up to you. But for me on a vehicle, maybe I'm traveling on a bus or on the train, I will prefer my ambient sound level to be zero and probably full noise cancelling, right? But some people might prefer to have maybe a little bit of ambient sound level, and that's okay. It really is entirely up to you. When you're staying in one spot, however, now, I prefer maximum noise cancelling when I'm staying in one spot, but some of you who may be wearing earbuds during lessons, if it's allowed these days, I don't quite know, but if assuming you're allowed to wear earbuds during lessons, during lectures, you might want to set ambient sound level to maximum plus activate voice pass through so you can hear your lecturer. So once you've decided what level of ambient sound you want for each specific action, tap on done. And from now, the earbuds will automatically switch between your presets, ambient sound level presets based on these actions. So that was action-based adaptive sound control. 
Now we're going to talk about location-based adaptive sound control. The earbuds is also able to switch to your preferred ambient sound level based on the places you visit. And here's how it works, okay? At the bottom, you see something called automatic switching at my places. There are two ways you can do this. You can let the app automatically populate a list of places that you frequent. And this is automatic, meaning that it will draw from Google Maps API. So if you tap on register from learn locations, you can see a list of places, which you can then assign specific ambient sound levels to specific places. But you can also register your own locations and you can do this by tapping on register from map and here you can see that it's just like google maps by tapping on a specific place say boon king metro station mrt station you can then set the uh how large you want the area to be so that when you step into this area this switch triggers okay so you can make it bigger or you can make it smaller it's entirely up to you click next and tap on say okay so this this is obviously the train station so tap on next and here you can now set whether you want noise cancelling ambient mode what level of ambient mode you want and whether you want voice pass through it's entirely up to you at the train station i usually prefer to have full noise cancelling and you can also set the specific equalizer and speak to chat option that you want in those areas. I will cover equalizer and speak to chat later, so stay tuned for that. Then click on register, and now you can see that at the bottom of these other places that I've registered, there is a station, okay? Some people may find adaptive sound control useful, but I personally don't really find it quite useful for me because I prefer one setting for all different locations, all different activities, right? So that's just me. I just prefer to have a bit more manual control over my earbuds. So if you're like me, just leave it turned off. But if the idea of the earbuds automatically switching to your preferred ambient level based on location and based on actions, if you want that, then this is definitely worth turning on. So that was adaptive sound control. Let's switch to sound settings. And here you can see that the very first sound setting is something called ambient sound control. Now, this is Sony's umbrella term for its active noise cancelling and transparency settings. And if you have adaptive sound control already turned on, whatever setting that you do here will be overridden as soon as adaptive sound control triggers a different ambient sound level. So if you want a setting to not switch and stay as is, you have to turn off adaptive sound control, okay? So once you turn off adaptive sound control, then you can set your preferred ambient sound level, full noise cancelling, and the setting will stay. It will not switch. Okay, next we have speak to chat. This is a feature that uses the microphones inside the earbud to pick up your voice when you start speaking to somebody. So once it detects that you're speaking, it switches on ambient sound pass through so that you can have a proper conversation with the person in front of you. If you turn on speak to chat, there are several options you can play with. Voice detect sensitivity. By default, it's set to automatic, but I prefer low sensitivity because if you set it to automatic or high sensitivity it is very sensitive so even if you so much as clear your throat it will trigger speak to chat right i don't want that i want it to be less sensitive than that so i turn on the low sensitivity option and next time until the mode closes by default it's set to standard which is approximately 15 seconds. So once speak to chat kicks in, it takes about 15 seconds for full noise cancellation to kick back in, assuming that you've set the earbuds to full noise cancelling. But I prefer to set it to long. Why? Because if I'm using speak to chat and I'm talking to somebody, I want to be able to give that person a chance to respond in full before I start speaking again, right? So if you set it to short, five seconds, that person in front of you will only have five seconds to respond to you before full noise cancelling kicks back in. I don't like that, so I switch it to long. And anyway, if he's already done speaking to me and 
ambient sound pass through is still turned on, I simply have to tap on the earbud to reactivate active noise cancelling. Very simple, okay? Next, the equalizer settings. Very simple again, you have various EQ presets to choose from, mellow, relaxed, vocal, treble boost. You can also tap on the cog wheel at the lower right hand corner and enter the manual EQ presets. You've got five bands from the mid range all the way to the high frequencies. Okay, so just feel free to play around with the settings. I will not go into so much detail here because there will be another video coming soon about what are the best custom EQ presets for the XM5 earbuds. So if you don't want to miss that video, hit subscribe right now and tap the bell button to stay notified. But if you don't want to go through the hassle of manually equalizing the earbuds, you can let the app decide for you what are your preferred custom sound settings. And you can do this by using the new Find Your Equalizer feature, which is still in beta as of this moment. Click on Start and follow the instructions. The app will ask you to play your own music and give you several versions of the same song. And you have to simply decide which version sounds better to you, right? Simple. And by doing that, it arrives at a very close approximation of what your preferred sound settings are. And if you want to do further customization beyond that, it's entirely up to you. In my experience, it was actually pretty effective at giving me the kind of sound that I want. Plus and minus a few tweaks. Okay. So next we have 360 Reality Audio Setup. Now, what is 360 Reality Audio? This is Sony's special format for music that gives you a more enveloping spherical sound field that makes you feel like you're in the middle of a band playing rather than hearing music purely in stereo. It's quite nice. I do like certain tracks that are mastered in 360 Reality Audio and to get the most out of such tracks, which by the way, are only available on certain streaming platforms, you will have to analyze your ears. And you can do this by letting the app take snapshots of your ears, left and right. Very simple. Do it if you wanna try out 360 Reality Audio. Otherwise, you can skip this part and simply enjoy your music in pure stereo. Bluetooth connection quality, very straightforward. You have two options here prioritize sound quality and prioritize stable connection. If you're experiencing signal drops, you will select prioritize stable connection because this gives you the option of streaming at a more compressed audio codec. In this case, it's AAC on both iOS and Android. But if you want higher quality, like me, I want the best possible audio codec stream, whether I'm streaming on Android or iOS, I will select prioritize sound quality. This gives me the option of streaming in the high resolution LDAC codec on Android. Of course, it's important to note that if you want to stream in the high resolution LDAC codec, it's got to be on an Android device and you have to go into your XM5's Bluetooth settings and turn on LDAC, HD audio. That way you will be able to stream in the high resolution LDAC codec, okay? So back to the Headphones Connect app. Next we've got DSE Extreme. Always turn on DSE Extreme because it's a great audio upscaler. When you're streaming over Bluetooth, chances are that some data might have been lost during the transmission. DSE Extreme will upscale your music so that it sounds like no data has been lost over transmission. You can actually hear the difference. If you listen to music with and without DSE Extreme, you'll notice that on DSE Extreme, the quality of the resolution of your music is a lot higher, more precise, and you can hear a bit more transient detail in the background. Pretty awesome. Spatial sound and head tracking. Spatial sound gives you the sensation of having a 360 degree open cinematic experience when watching movies and videos on certain apps like Netflix and YouTube. Spatial sound is only supported on Android devices running Android 13 and above at least on paper.
because I have not been able to get spatial sound to work on Samsung devices, but I was able to get it to work on the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV. So not all Android devices support spatial sound as of this moment. What about Android head tracking? Now, in theory, Android head tracking gives you the option of letting you pin the audio to your screen so that when you move your head, the audio stays in one spot. So it's kind of cool. It's kind of like Apple's spatial audio with head tracking. But this time I was not able to get head tracking to work, even though it says that it's supported on the Xperia 1 Mark V. Like seriously, if I were to go into the XM5's Bluetooth setting here, head tracking is now turned on. But when I'm watching YouTube or some other app, it does not do head tracking at all. So pretty weird. Uh, I'm waiting for some answer from Sony about why this is so. And when Sony gives me an answer, I will come back to you at the soonest. Okay, let's move on to system. Connect to two devices simultaneously. That's multi-point pairing. Turn it on. Why not? Because that way you will also be able to use LDAC at the same time as being able to connect to up to two devices at once. So you can stream your audio from one device and take calls from the other device. And when you turn on multi-point pairing, the status screen will also have this option of letting you manage your different connections. So pretty intuitive. Back to system. Next, voice assistant. Um, I'm not a big fan of voice assistants from my earbuds, so I leave it turned off. But it's up to you if you want to use Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, or Siri. Feel free to activate voice assistant function. Otherwise, do not use. Next, we've got change the touch sensor function. Now, you've got volume controls on both sides, so you don't have to worry about that. Just repeatedly tap on the earbuds touch panel to toggle volume control, but you do have to choose which earbud does what. So maybe the left earbud, you want to get it to do ambient sound control or quick access on the right earbud, playback control, or you want to reverse, say, ambient sound control on the right earbud, maybe because it's more intuitive for right-handers, left earbud do playback control. It's entirely up to you as well. Okay, ambient sound control setting. This lets you decide what ambient sound modes you want to toggle through. Here, you can see that the off mode is turned off. It's left out, right? So when you're toggling through, it's noise cancelling ambient sound, then noise cancelling again. But if I were to turn on the off mode, it's noise cancelling ambient sound, ambient sound mode off, then noise cancelling again. Or you could also have noise cancelling left out of the equation and simply toggle through ambient sound and noise cancelling off. It's entirely up to you. For me, I prefer to have noise cancelling and ambient sound. It's a lot more straightforward and quicker, you know, by toggling into ambient sound mode, I can toggle straight back into noise cancelling mode as soon as I have my conversation with people. Okay, next, quick access. This gives you double tap and triple tap quick access to Endel or Spotify tap. And this only works on the side that has ambient sound control. And next, we've got head gesture which is a new feature that allows you to answer phone calls by nodding and reject phone calls by shaking your head. Um, some people are comfortable with doing that in public, and it is quite useful if you have both hands full. Of course, some of you might not be comfortable with that, so you can leave it turned on, but I like the feature, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that turned on. Determines optimal earbud tips. This lets the app determine for you whether you are achieving a good enough noise cancelling seal. It's very important because a good seal will determine whether you are getting the right amount of active noise cancelling and it also improves sound quality, notably in the bass frequencies. So I recommend that you go through the test, let the app determine for you whether you are achieving a good seal or not, and if you're not achieving a good seal, just change the size of the tips and try again. For me, M size is like good enough for me. Automatic power off. Okay, here I left it to do not turn off. That's because I'm now doing this demo and I don't want a earbud to turn off on me in the middle, right? So I deliberately set it to do not turn off, but it's pretty 
draining on the battery. So if you want to conserve battery, it's best to leave it on off when headphones are removed. Pause when headphones are removed. Yes, leave it turned on because it's very good for conserving battery. Capture voice during a phone call. This is something that people have requested. Now, usually, especially on the previous models, when you're having a phone call, ambient sound mode is turned on at the same time so that you can hear yourself. So you don't end up shouting in public when you're having a phone call because you can't hear your own voice. If you like it, leave it on. But if you don't like it, leave it turned off. I leave it turned on because I am pretty self-conscious and I don't want people to look at me in public when I'm shouting over the phone. Notification and voice guide allows you to control the volume of the voice prompts. Very neat. You can make it louder, make it softer. I prefer to set it at minus one because I think I do think that the voice guide is a bit too loud sometimes. And of course, language. Let's not forget language. Pick the language that you're good in. For me, it's English, believe it or not. Now, update software. Now, this is important. Guys, set auto-update to off. Do not turn on auto-update, and I'll tell you why. Sometimes, when Sony introduces new updates, it might affect the performance of the product, and you will want to know what the update does first before the earbuds get updated, right? So always turn off auto-update and wait for my review of the software update before you do it. Very important. And by the way, if you want to know in advance if future updates for the XM5 will affect its performance, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. Download only when connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah. Now, services. Till now, I haven't really used services at all. Now, when I listen to music, I use Apple Music. So having Spotify tap is really useful only for people who wants to get spontaneous recommendations from Spotify by double tapping on the earbuds. It's not a feature that appeals to me, so it's something that I do not really pay attention to. Now, Endo is a fee-based service. It provides meditative soundscapes to help you sleep and stuff like that. Again, it really doesn't appeal to me, but if it does appeal to you, you will want to turn service link on because that way you will be able to access some of the special features that these apps provide. And do remember that if you want quick access to these services to make sure that you activate it through the quick access menu. Double tap for Endo or Spotify tap, Triple tap or endo or Spotify tap. Okay, so that's about it. This concludes the tutorial for the Sony WF-1000XM5's custom settings in the Sony Headphones Connect app. What are your thoughts and what is it about the Sony settings that you will like to know? Let me know in the comments. Like I said before, if you want to stay tuned for my custom EQ settings video for the Sony WF-1000XM5 and future videos covering software updates that may or may not affect its performance, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. Thanks for watching. Smash like and share to show some love. I'm also on Twitter, so if you have Twitter, if you don't mind following me there, just click on the link below in the description. And click here to watch me compare the XM5 to the WF-1000XM4 and LinkBuds S, and click over here to watch me compare it to some of the most popular earbuds in the market. See you in the next one.